Welcome to the Occupational Safety Leadership Podcast, episode number 214 with Wiley Davidson. Um, I heard a talk from Wiley, and I can't quite remember where the talk was, but I thought, I need to have him on here then. You talked you talked a little bit about um about legacy and about leaving that real good legacy behind out there. So uh I asked him to come and join us today and just to just to kind of go over a couple of things. Um I hate to say it, but there's a lot of uh, safety folks out there that are kind of getting older and now we're ready to pass it over to that very next generation. So um Wiley, let's just let's just dive right in there, bud. Yeah, and it's funny because we were both talking off camera about where we actually made the connection and met together, and neither of us could come up with it. And I think it was you that said, well, we're all getting a little older, so I guess we'll just chalk it up to that. But regardless of what brought us here, it's great to be able to join you today and uh, just spend a few minutes talking mm -hmm. about you know, what I feel is a very important topic to me, and that is creating and, uh, and continuing on with that, creating a, a culture of safety, you know, both on the job and off the job. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah uh yeah um i like to i like to i like to think that because i really didn't have that much uh help as i was was let's let's just call it as i was growing up in uh safety i've made a lot of mistakes out there and i'm hoping that others can learn from this and what i and and what i also want is um for them to get a whole lot better than i ever was out there so I think I think this topic really fits in good with just leaving that real good legacy behind. Yeah, you know, and it's funny, there's a, a part of my presentation where I talk about exactly that, you know, there's, you know, there's two sides to any good relationship, whether it be a working relationship, a personal relationship, there's got to be give and take, you know, and I and I address the fact that a lot of us older folks have been doing this job for a lot of years, we've got a lot of great experience. Some of us have the scars to prove it, you know, and so we have a lot to share. <laughs> So, in, you know, in my session, I encourage safety professionals to seek out those individuals, you know, and, and encourage them to speak up, whether it be a general safety topic or maybe we're doing a specific training class on lockout tagout. And you may have an employee that has either a good experience or something valuable to share and tapping into that resource, because that's more relatable than just saying it might happen, right? This In this scenario, it did happen. And then the other side of the equation is, you know, and I, and, I, and I like I say, like to say, the young folks, they're not off the hook either because they their parents did a great job teaching them the, the value of safety with child proofing homes, bicycle knee pads and helmets. You know, that's nothing more than lockout tag out and proper PPE when you look at it. So encouraging both sides to to bring to the table what their experience are, what their knowledge is or just, you know, talking, you know, back and forth really makes that foundation of a, a culture of safety is easy to apply. Yeah. 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 I really like that um, example when you were talking about, uh, um, um, uh, about tapping into that resource, you know, I think all of us have those folks out there and um, you know, I know a lot about hazards, but I don't know a lot about specific hazards. The maintenance guys are really good. They really know because nobody's ever called a maintenance person and said, you're doing a great job and then hangs up. <laughs> there's something that's broken. There's a reason why. Nor do why safety that professionals get that, that dap either. The only time, it's like being an offensive lineman, right? The only time you get on the jumbo trying when that runs called back for holding. You know what I mean? It's, you know, it's a very thankless job at times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know. But those guys have a lot of that knowledge out there, you know, and I can show up, I can say a, a few things and that's awesome and great for everybody. But when Joe says that stuff, it has a whole lot mm -hmm. more weight because um, Joe experiences it, you know, Joe knows about that kind of stuff, you know, so I really right, like right. to use the yeah, folks as much as I, as I can. Right. You know, and I use, it's funny because I use that similar analogy in, in part of my presentation where I talk about how everything I pretty much say in my one hour legacy presentation are pretty much the same things that safety professionals say every single day out of the year. I just have a unique way of saying it, right? I always say we're all playing <laughs> the same sheet music. I'm just spinning at a much faster RPM with the energy that, you know, that I am allowed to bring versus just a regular everyday training class. But the difference is, and I use the analogy of like when we were kids, right? When our when we were kids, our parents would tell us all kinds of things, wouldn't they? And we'd be like, okay, ma, got it, whatever, dad. And it'd blow right off our shoulder. 
But then yep. when the neighbor or a family friend or a relative says the exact same thing, all of a sudden it's crystal clear, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like where I feel my my message really fits that gap because again, I'm that neighbor, I'm the family friend. I'm saying the same things that you're already trying to get your employees to buy into. I'm just doing it in a different way. And by using, uh, you know, the message has a lot of humor, a lot of energy, you know, a lot of thought provoking antidotes so that at the end of that hour, they can relate to at least a dozen, maybe more takeaways that, that, that they can not only apply or agree or connect to but apply right away which is which i think that's part of the the reason why leaving a safety legacy has become such a a big hit is that it from entry level to c-suite everyone's walking away with something so it's good stuff right yeah. right right and if you can weave in some humor because typically safety safety type training is not fun typically i mean i try to make it fun but sometimes it's just um, I get it, and I am a safety 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 guy. Sometimes it's really hard to get through the um, requirements and make it fun, you know. So, yeah. so anytime that that you can weave it, can weave it in, it probably really helps folks. Yeah, I had a, 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 a attendee earlier this year reach out to me like a couple of days after the presentation, and she says, "I got to be honest with you, I wasn't looking forward to your presentation because normally they're, you know, they're they're drawn out and it's uh, uh you know, doom and gloom." And she's like, "But I got to tell you, you know, not only did you change my opinion right away, but you know, I went home and did some of the things that you pointed out." And like that's, I always say that's like. finding money in your winter coat right i didn't know that <laughs> you impacted somebody um to the point where they reacted to it that that you know that that you're hitting the mark then but oh it's, it's yes, yes 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 yeah. yes well and you've done a lot of traveling to different places so you've seen a lot of really good cultures and a lot of probably not too great cultures too you know, so are there any examples that really stand out that you could say i gave a talk at a certain place and you even learned something. Yeah, well, you know, and, and I'll address that two-sided, right? You're right. I've In the 10 plus years of doing this professionally, I've seen a lot, you know, both mm -hmm. sides of the spectrum. And, and obviously most of the places you go to, uh, they're already doing some of the right things, right? They're not bringing a public or a professional safety speaker to come in. Usually if they're doing something bad, they're like, nope, we're good. We don't need you in our building, <laughs> right? Yeah. But I will say, and again, I talk about it in my session, there was a, an event where I was doing a, a presentation and I had a, an individual in the audience, what I refer to as the sniper, right? He's the mm. guy or gal or multiples that like to sit in the back of the room during a training class. They're usually the class clown. They're always taking shots at what you're trying to do. Well, at <laughs> one point during that presentation, he kind of flipped and, you know, at the end of it, he was like one of the first ones to come up to me and say, hey, man, I really enjoyed this. I really appreciate the message, you know. And then a few days later, I had a chance to talk with him uh, and he was brutally honest. He's like, you know what? There is no safety culture here. It's me watching out for myself because nobody else is buying into the program. And so I kind of understood where he was coming from, but that doesn't make it right. Right. So what mm -hmm. was cool about that story is, you know, a little later on, I find out that he joins the safety committee and they mm -hmm. go from being one of the worst producing numbers in that company to one of the best because they changed the way they looked at their own personal safety culture, not only just themselves, but the people they work with and the people that are counting on you to come home tonight and have dinner with. Right. Those those are all the factors. You know, I, I, I boil it down into three main reasons why we all should work safe and that is your family your quality of life and your future and if you can keep mm -hmm. all of those three in perspective that is really all the why i need to work safe and be safe and and, and try to like i said get home to that table every night mm -hmm. great yeah. great great so it sounds like he like he was able to see to see the value to also see that the company was serious enough because if a company was not serious, they're not going to pay to bring in somebody, you know? Right, so right. The, 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 the company must have thought, we got to change the culture. We got to do something about this, you know? So Yeah, well, it was yeah. definitely a, a changing of the guard at that point. I think that was the initial reason why they had me come in. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he like I said, that guy told me, he's like, you know, they're just putting a Band-Aid on this. 
like they always do. They're not trying to fix it. They're not trying to fix the problem. They're just trying to hopefully make it goes away or sl slow the bleeding down. So, mm -hmm. you know, that that message actually turned out to be the tipping point for them, which was great, right? Because mm -hmm. then they were able to take that, you know, the 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 takeaway analogies, the some of the things like don't make me call your mama or work like your kids are watching, <laughs> yeah. you know, the things that I have built into my message that now they have those tools, like I said earlier, that they can immediately start applying and using and that's that's awesome i love right, it. right 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 so blessed right. to be able to do what i do so, for a living <laughs> i have found that some people when they sit down for a training they're a little skeptical because it seems like they hear a different message every month or every quarter and so they're they're almost like so what's it going to be this month like yeah you know, what's going to be the big change now and now i have to do something different so the flavor of the day Oh, yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, in, in, in my previous life, um, I am, I was, I worked for a company that not only did we do these presentations, but we helped companies build, create, and sustain effective safety cultures. Mm. So that's the key is not to like, if you want me to come in and, and do a one hour presentation, that's great, you know, but I hope that you at least take the tools that I leave behind and implement them. Right. And a lot of the takeaways that I do have built into legacy are right there. There's mm -hmm. a very easy to pick them up and start using them. There's no training involved. There's no skill set. It's just start using those tools. Mm -hmm. And what's great when I worked in that in that previous position is not only was I like I may be helping company A with a, a problem or a situation that they've got going on, but I've already talked to companies B, C, and D, and they've already went through that and they've got some really great ideas so that I could share those thoughts with them. So that was almost as fun as being the presenter was helping those companies create and keep them sustainable. And there's so many great ways out there. And, you know, like I say, I've always, I say it at the end of my presentations, you know, if you feel that my message could help, or if you just want to chat, you know, reach out to me because there's yeah. so many great things that I've learned over the years doing this. And it's all, and it makes me look like I'm a genius when I come up with a solution, but really I just stole it from Dave, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> but sharing's caring brother, right? Yeah. Sharing is caring. So that's yes. a lot of where uh, I, I, I love to get that momentum going and keep it going. Yeah, 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 yeah. I try to tell the uh, safety the safety pros out there that you should always be talking to other folks out there in uh, industry. I mean, because it may be a problem that you're really struggling with, but maybe another person's already solved it, and you can bounce yeah, some ideas. Yeah, and that's why it's important ideas. to go to those. Yeah, it's so important to go to those conferences, right? Even if it's a local, or regional, or a state, or a national event, get to as many as you can because there's so much great content. Not only with just folks like myself that have a story to tell but there's a lot of good how do i build a culture program how do i you know whatever xyz and a lot of great information's out there but you got to get out there and seek it out it ain't going to come to you right 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 yeah. right right safety is one of those things that everybody will share uh but they're not always just going to purposely start telling everybody everything you know because mm -hmm. everybody's busy so if you yeah. sit down ask ask folks, talk with folks. You can really learn a awful lot. Um, I haven't met a, a safety, a safety pro yet that wouldn't talk about it because they were so worried that the competition was going to get this and they would lose some, uh, some profit or something like, like that. They're, right. I mean, they're really into it. Safety is one of those professions that you're there to help folks. I've never met somebody who, who got into it to, uh, to make a bunch of money and, uh, retire when they were in their forties still, that, that just right. doesn't happen. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Getting paid to do it is a blessing or, right. or as a byproduct, but the opportunity to get out there and change lives is the blessing. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. You know, and it's exactly. funny you mentioned earlier about how sometimes the messages seem to be uh, repetitive. It's the mm -hmm. same story over and over again. You know, my message is not a victim story, right? I'm actually the mm -hmm. opposite. I refer to it as a survivor story, right? It's your survivor mm -hmm. story. Uh, and I can't tell you how many times I've had people come up to me after a presentation and say, I missed the first five, 10 minutes of, of your talk because I was trying to figure out what was wrong with you. Like, what happened mm -hmm. to you? And I'm like, well, nothing, at least nothing mm -hmm. I want to talk about, right? Uh, right? But uh, it's it's interesting because now we start, we, we're almost like pre-qualifying or pre um setting up we're setting up our our employees to expect the same story oh it's 
it's first of the year. We're bringing in another victim story. <laughs> oh, it's, it, it's it's safety week when we must have we must hear from another person that got hurt. Yes, you know, yes. and unfortunately, they become numb to that, right? The, you know, and then if and if you're what that person, their injury doesn't apply to what you per- specifically do for a living. Mm-hmm. If if it's not applicable, it's like it, it's a good story, but I didn't right. learn anything from it. You know, it was just it was a great way to kill an hour. You know that kind of thing. Right. So, you know, and the good ones, you know, like uh, there's a lot of really good colleagues of mine out there that are what I classify as a victim that are phenomenal, not only storytellers, but they they have a great message that you take away. So, not discounting them at all. I'm just saying that sometimes mm-hmm. it's nice to have a change. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And yeah. any time that you can think about that message afterwards, it must it must have had impact on you. Um yeah. like like the like the uh talk like the talk that you gave, it had an impact on me. Not as much as I could tell you what city in town I heard it out, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really good and I wanted to sit down and talk talk more, of course, you know. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, and again, it doesn't matter where you got it as long as you kept it. Right. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. No. Yeah, yeah. I I I try to stay on the positive side as much as much as I can. Uh there was a trying to think what year it was there was a year where a lot of uh safety 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 type trainings were coming out with these super horrible videos like this is what happens to your skin when you get you know uh acid on shock and off oh yeah yes yes you know and i fell for it until i watched it the first time and i was like this is so awful i there's no way that i could show this to anybody you know yeah yeah Um, well i always say there's like there's two sides to safety Right. There's the arts and the science. Mm -hmm. The science is the technical stuff, right? The things that we do every day, the lockout tag out training, you know, all the the things that were required either by law or that our company, you know, wants to have our employees uh, exposed to and trained on. Right. Then there's the art side. The arts is more the thin air stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. You can't really put your fingers on it. It's not black and white. It's full of color. It's the culture side of it. You know, and I think a lot of companies out there they've got the 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 science down to a down to a science right you know and right, i use right. the analogy a lot in, in in legacy where i talk i i use the jigsaw puzzle analogy and i said well how do you start a jigsaw puzzle right you know you start with the corners the edges the easy stuff and when it comes to our safety program we've kind of done it the same way haven't we with mm-hmm. the easy stuff first rules and regulations policies and procedures proper gear and equipment training, right? There's our four corners. We got our sides done. Now we got to do the hard part, completing that image. And the missing pieces is the culture side of it. It's what we personally bring to to the table every day. It's what we personally bring to work and our, our why we do what we do again, family, quality of life, future, it, all those missing pieces in the, in those pieces are what we that we personally make up right they're your family they're your kids your your parents your grandparents your in-laws right that quality of life those things that you love to do every day whether it be fishing hunting reading a book you know being outside Mm -hmm. whatever and then that future is like okay what do you you know what where do you see your future being you know what you know are you gonna retire at 65 or are you gonna work until you're 80 you know and what and what's that gonna look like when you retire so having all those pieces in front of you, it really makes a, a, a it makes it a lot easier to focus on that culture side of it. Oh yes, 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 yes. I so I really like how you weaved in things um, like hobbies because a lot of people will talk about family and friends and all that, but but you also kind of think about but what's in it for me too. You know, yeah. I like to hunt and fish, and you know, so I, I I found that to be really really good when you talked about that. Yeah. A lot of times when I like, I'll solicit from the audience, you know, what's the number one reason for being safe. And, and obviously number one is always family. It, mm-hmm. it, no matter what I do, it without a doubt, regardless of the audience or the industry, it's always family. Well, not everyone's married. Not everyone has a significant other. Not everyone's parents are still alive. So, you know, you can't just say, well, oh, if you don't have family, then you can be unsafe. You know, that kind of thing. There's <laughs> other things, right? We all have a quality of life that we love to do, regardless right. of who's in that group with us. And right. we all have a future, right? We mm-hmm. all we all got a goal that we are, we're looking towards and we're working towards. And, and if we can do it safely, it's really that's going to dictate 
the way that future looks, right? It's not the the it's not the goal of getting there. It's that journey along the way. And it's how you treat yourself along the way that's really going to dictate the way that finish line looks and how right. easily you get there. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about a couple of other um examples. So um without any company company names, of course, you know, kind of go over a few um examples that you can think of where you, you went in. You kind of examined the situation, you gave a good talk, and you had to kind of like modify your speech a little bit then. Because all of us know that in safety, you can't use the same exact talk on every single person, regardless of, you know, rank, position of company, the hazards out there, all that good stuff. Absolutely. You know, and I learned that early on in my speaking career that you can't be specific to one industry or you know one demographic or one whatever you you have to make it global so to answer your question there aren't too many places where i've gone into where i'm like oh this ain't working right there the, this oh, is good, not hitting good. the mark because mm -hmm. you learn early on that okay you know in order for it to be effective it can't like like i used the example of the victim story mm -hmm. right a few minutes ago if they don't do that job then it doesn't necessarily hit the mark unless that storyteller is a really good storyteller and makes it applicable. Right. Um, for me, I, I think my biggest thing is one, you got to know the audience, right? Am I speaking to entry level? Am I speaking to supervisor? Am I talking to senior leadership? It changes a little bit depending on who the audience is, but I don't think it changes too much because like I said in the beginning, this message really resonates from top to bottom, bottom to top, however you want to, you know, approach the org chart. But uh, there aren't, like I said, there aren't too many places where I've gone into where it didn't work. You know, I've had those moments where I've had to put some work in, you know, right, uh, right, right. I remember mm -hmm. doing a presentation for a utility company in Boston. It was a Friday afternoon. It was the Memorial Day weekend. And the guy that introduced me, he basically said to the guys, all right, uh, I've seen Wiley speak. He's really great. Um, between now, after he's done, you guys are done for the long weekend. We'll see you on Tuesday. And they and he leaves. And I and I'm pretty sure he locked the door <laughs> behind him. Right? It's kind of like that scene in a Bronx Tale. Right now, you just can't leave. Right? I'm like, uh oh. Yeah. So I quickly realized, okay, this presentation is going to be a lot more colorful than speaking to a senior leadership group. This these guys, I'm going to really have to, you know make it applicable to them you know right right right. uh i was at a foundry once at midnight mm -hmm. you know and you know picture the guys and gals working in a foundry at midnight They're, they don't want to see a safety speaker they're there to get the job <laughs> done and so i approached it uh i you know they all sit single file in the back row <laughs> so i grabbed a chair i spun it around sat backwards and i start, just started shooting the breeze with them Mm -hmm. What they didn't realize was I was doing the first 10 minutes of my presentation, but I did it totally organically to the point where they didn't realize we were 10, 15 minutes in. So at that point, I'm like, well, I should probably stand up and do this the right way. And they're like, we already started. Mm -hmm. This is great. You know, that right, kind right, of right. thing. Yeah. Right. And then the other one, I guess, that comes to mind as I'm you know, talking out loud is, um, you know, and again, I mentioned it in the session, there was a, a presentation I did for a group of one, mm -hmm. one young man all by himself. There was a sign-up sheet. Everybody went to the morning class. He was the only one. And, and it's interesting because he said to me, he's like, if you want to leave, I get it. I don't want to waste your time. You know, but I'm mm -hmm. like, no, well, no, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to waste your time. You know, and I said, well, we're yeah. going to figure it out. So we ended up having a safety conversation instead mm -hmm. of a presentation, sat down with them, two of right. us at the table. And it was, David, it was totally organic. We talked about everything. We talked about fishing. We talked about growing mm -hmm. up in that area. I mean, I stayed on point with what I wanted to get across, mm -hmm. but it was totally organic. And it ended up really being one of my favorite presentations because when I was driving home, I realized I could have easily mailed that in, right? I could have easily said, I'm not doing a presentation for one. You're on the hook for the payment, bud. Honey, right, I'll right. be home for dinner, but that's not... <laughs> That's right. not doing the right thing every single time. Exactly. And I realized that driving home, that that was a watershed moment for me. And I just hope that I made as much of an impression on that impression on him as he did. I'll never know. Chances of right. me running into that guy. I remember his name, Josh. I talk mm -hmm. about him in every presentation, but the odds of me meeting him again are probably pretty slim. But like I said, I, I just hope that I made as much of an impact on him as, as he did me. 
Right, 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 yeah. right, right. I liked how you were talking about doing the uh, right thing because all of us know that employees are watching us, you know, yeah. so we got to do the right thing every single time. Um, you can't say, well, I, th I think I'm, I think I'm kind of slick and I could sneak by and do something or maybe I'll cut a little corner. Uh, and from time to time you can. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, yeah. just like, just like, just like when we were kids, we were watching our parents and that's yes. how we kind of, we kind of, we kind of figured out stuff, you know, because kids, yeah. kids know much, much more than they will ever say and talk about and everything else then, you know, so yeah. they, right. they really do see and hear everything out there. Now they may tell you like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Dad. You know, but they, they, mm -hmm. they really got it. Of course. Right. You know? Right. It's so, like that old adage, like you hope that your children, what they do when you're not around, is just as effective as they do when you are, you know, exactly. and, and it's funny because that leads into a, another big takeaway of mine. And that is work like your kids are watching, you know, mm -hmm. that one, when I unleash that to the audience, I purposely pause because I love to watch it sink in. Mm -hmm. Right. And and it's either a huh moment or it's a, Oh, right. I got to write that down moment. And it, and it's, <laughs> and, it, and it's so simple but it's so weighted, right? You know, mm -hmm. like, and I use the analogy, like, well, why are your kids watching? You know, are, 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 you know, take your kid to work day. I always frowned on that, right? Cause that's always so, let me show you where I work. And this is mommy and daddy's, you know, whatever. And you know, that, yeah, you know right. have them stand behind you watching you work for eight, 10, 12 hours. That's the real take your kid to work day. And if you did have those, those children behind you, would you take those chances? Like we said, sometimes we can get away with, or would you, you know, what if you were training them? What if the whole reason why they're behind you is because someday they're going to take over your job and they're going to do it the exact same way dad did or mom did, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah, right. it's, it, you got to work like your kids are watching every day. Cause you never know, like you said a few minutes ago, that, mm -hmm. that new hire might be in a totally different department, but you don't think within a couple of days, they know who the, the lead people are on the job. Right. Oh, and they're yeah. watching, mm -hmm. they're taking cues from you. You know, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I, I'll do it that way because that's the way he does it or she does it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. So, Wiley, this has been a fantastic talk, but we are bumping, bumping up on time. Let the I audience told you, know. I told you it would fly. <laughs> <laughs> Let the audience know how they can find you out there. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously my website, leavingasafetylegacy.com is the easiest. There's not too many Wiley Davidsons out there either. So I think oh. you could find that uh, easy <laughs> enough. W-Y-L-I-E, right? As long as you spell mm -hmm. it correctly. Uh, you know, and uh, reach out on LinkedIn. I'm always trying to kind of put where I'm going to be for the next mm -hmm. three, four weeks or three or four months so that people, if they want to come and see the presentation, they're like, oh, he's going to be in Des Moines. That's great. I'll go check him there. Or he's going to be in Savannah mm -hmm. or whatever. So there's a lot of different ways to get contact with me uh like i said leaving a safety legacy is the message um my website's another great uh like i said a great piece because there's a there's a video that kind of gives you a lead into who i am what the message is about as well as presentation style there's a lot of easy ways yeah mm -hmm. awesome or this great life. podcast <laughs> thank you thank you thank you so much so i have a lot more to, to uh discuss and talk about but we are out of time so. okay um, and with that, I want to thank you for joining me. This was episode 214. 14. Yes. Yes. Everybody, thank you. Thank you for joining me and have a safe day. Awesome. Take care.